Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas to everybody. A blessed, blessed Christmas to you all. To those of you that may be watching around the world in Chile, America, we feel for you. And we are praying for you. Those of you that are unwell, and we know that some of you are unwell, would love to be here this morning. We are praying your strength and God's healing over your life. Those of us that are gathered this morning, we thank God that we have the wonderful privilege Christmas falling on a Sunday, first time for seven years. And uh, what a better way to start the Christmas celebration than to start it in the house of the Lord. And as the psalmist says, give unto the Lord the glory due to his name and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Would you stand with me? We're going to sing our first hymn this morning. After which First Lady is going to come and she's going to open the service in prayer. Praise God. And our first hymn is Angels We Have Heard on High. Sweetly singing 
Let the church say amen. Praise the Lord. First lady, come and lead us to the throne of grace. Good morning, church. Good morning. Merry Christmas to you all. Amen. amen. Let us pray. Father, we just count it a privilege to be able to come, to be able to bless and glorify your name. We thank you, O oh God, that you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. We're thanking you this morning for this Christmas season. But we pray, Father, that we will not become distracted by everything that's going on around us. We thank you, O oh God, that you came, God. We thank you for the sacredness of your birth, God. You came and you set a plan in place for each and every one of us. We thank you, O oh God, for being able to celebrate this Christmas season even as we see the lights twinkling God we know without a doubt that you are the light of the world we thank you that you are Emmanuel that you are the God who is with us we thank you oh God that you never leave us nor forsake us we thank you and we praise you that you are the wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace we thank you oh God that when you left that you left your peace with us father we thank you that we can come together as the body of christ as kingdom citizens and we can celebrate your birth we can lift up and magnify and glorify your holy name father we thank you that you brought us to this point because there are many who did not make it there are many oh god who were snatched from time into eternity but you still have work for us to do so father we just pray in the name of Jesus that as we celebrate as we sing oh God as we lift up holy hands God that we will just remember who you are the king of glory the shepherd the, the, the lamb oh God who was slain before the foundation of the world we're just thanking you this morning we're just praising you this morning God you are mighty and marvelous and awesome and worthy of our praise God we just worship you the king oh god we bow before your throne oh god on bended knee we're just so thankful and privileged god that we can come that we can praise you oh god oh father we just give you all the praise father even as the word will come this morning we just pray god that you will open up our hearts to receive the word even for those who may be listening god even for those who may not be well we just pray that our hearts will be open and receptive to receive your word God that father we pray for the man of God who will stand to declare what thus saith the Lord that you will hide him behind the cross that when he stands to declare the word that we will know without a doubt that it comes straight from the throne room father we just pray that you will speak to us God that you will transform us whatever you need to do in and around and through us oh God that we would be receptive that we will be open God and father we just thank Thank you one more time, and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. I was tempted to ask First Lady to preach this morning. After, <laughs> after hearing that prayer, I, Lord have mercy, I'll sit down. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to have our very own Elder Burgess from uh, Open Door Christian Assembly. And it sounds like a little mini orchestra behind me with uh, uh, Brother Chris and Brother Orville on drums. And uh, Elder Burgess has agreed that he would come and uh, he would play the oboe for us. And he's got another instrument. He's gonna play a different song in a few minutes. But he's gonna come now and he's gonna bless us, amen, with a song, Elder Burgess.
Wonderful. I, we could take some more of that, couldn't we? <laughs> Wonderful. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Brother Nico, I see you're sitting. Uh, you have agreed to read the scriptures for us this morning, and it's your turn, sir. Um, come and uh, read the scriptures for us this morning. seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of intense darkness and the shadow of death, upon them has a light shined. You, O Lord, have multiplied the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you like the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil of, ba of battle. For the yoke of Israel's burden and the staff or rod of good and good in their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor. You have broken as in the day of Gideon with Midian. For every trampling warrior's war boots and all his armor in the battle tumult and, even, and every garment robed in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from latter day forth, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. And the other reading is Luke 1, 26 through 33. Now in the sixth month after that, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth, to a girl never having been married and a virgin engaged to be married to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, endowed with grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed, favored of God, are you before all other women. But when he but when she saw him, she was greatly troubled and disturbed and confused at what he said and kept revolving in her mind what such reading might mean. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found grace, free, spontaneous, absolute favor, and loving kindness with God. And listen, you will become, you will become pregnant and will give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, eminent, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his forefather David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob throughout the ages. And of his reign there will be no end. O oh, come. All ye faithful, let's stand together, let's sing, <coughs> amen.
the Alpha and Omega. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the Alpha and Omega. Right. We'll praise his name forever. 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 Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is so worthy of the praise. You may be seated. It's difficult to stop right there. I could tell you that now. I know your turkey and ham is uh, ready to be sliced and all that, but we start singing up in here. It's going to be something. Amen. We're going to have the lighting of the Advent candle. Amen. At this time. And I'm, uh, you, you reading? Yes, it's All right. And Sister Colleen's lighting the candle. Praise God, you may come at this time. After which, Elder Burgess is going to give us another selection, and uh, we'll go right into the word. Okay, so I was all ready to come this morning, had the outfit picked, the earrings and everything. Everything could happen, could happen. So my pretty green shoes are still over there. Because I didn't, my friend saw me coming barefooted and she said, you need, you, and then I found some red shoes in the car. So I put them on. But you know, God is good. And I was coming up the road, um, say, oh, I'm gonna be late now. And then this big truck down by, Always was across the street. And I started to get angry, but the Lord said, Cool it, honey. It's Christmas. So I said, Okay, I rested. And I, she said, Roll down the window and tell the man, Merry Christmas. I rolled down the window and said, Merry Christmas. And he broke out in a big smile because I think he expected for me to be mad and angry. But the Lord said, Now that's a good witness for Christmas. Yeah. Sometimes we have to go up what our feelings, seek the Lord, and see what the Lord will do because you never know what happened to that man because he was already upset because he was blocking the road, but I just had a, a smile. And you all pray for me, because it's this old Pentecostal song that says, it's bubbling, it's bubbling. I won't sing, because the friend over there laughed at me last Sunday, because I ran out of tune. <laughs> but it says, it's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. It's bubbling, it's bubbling, <laughs> since Jesus made me whole. Yeah. I don't know the rest of the I know the pastor knows, because it's an old Pentecostal song. And, but I just want to let you know, Pray for me because it's bubbling. And I don't yeah. want to be running up and down the church and acting like a Pentecostal. You know, you have to remember where you are sometimes. But I'm pleased to be here to read. And I said, you know, I'm so happy to see you all smiling and happy. I yeah. praise a lot of my closest relatives here who love me, even though my other ones don't like me so much. <laughs> and my best friends, some of my best friends that came to support me, um, Dr. Hill and her son Jay and my friend Isaac, all the way from somewhere in the south, um, but lives in New York, and they're here to support me. So um, it's bubbling, you guys. It's bubbling. <laughs> it's bubbling. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's get it together and be sensible. <laughs> That's right, if I need this to speak. A child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's Isaiah 9 and 6. My good friend will light the candles.
Who can light this candle? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the first reading is the same one that Nico read. And Nico, you read beautifully because you stopped at every full stop. You stopped at every comma. And the anointing of the Lord was on your life. I thank God for you. Now let me see if I could do the same thing. <laughs> the people who walked in darkness had seen a great light. Those who dwelled in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nations and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. A man rejoice when they divide this, as a man rejoices as they divide their spoil. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulders, the rod of oppressor, as in the day of Midden. For every warrior sandals, most the sandals from the noisy battle, and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with justice, with judgment and justice. For the time from this time forward, and the seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hallelujah. Amen. The next reading is a long one. <laughs> I've been practicing my God at school because I wanted to get here early and practice, but I practiced with my girlfriend before like about eight o'clock. <laughs> so I'm, you know I'm, I'm prepared. And the next one is from Luke two, one to twenty. I thought Nico is reading my same scriptures, but he read down further. So anyway, I get to read this one first. <laughs> and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus for all the world should be registered. This census took place with Coronius, the, government, the governing Syrian. So all went out to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went out from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea and the city of David, which is called, I need it again, called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. He registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were complete for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there was in the same country shepherds watching out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and each and on earth peace, goodwill toward man. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem. And see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. But when they had seen him, they made, they made widely knowing the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, not <laughs> Proclaim. O come, Emmanuel. Today the baby is born for us. His name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, Messiah, Jesus, Savior, joy to the world. Our hearts are filled with hope, peace, joy, and love. How are you going to share the good news of Christ's birth with others? And let us pray together. 
Oh, Emmanuel, you come to us as a baby and bring you the gift and bring and with you the gift of new life. Help us, oh, help us, we share this good news with the world. Amen. Amen. And this was taken from the Upper Room Advent Worship Litness. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Elder. I, 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 I have to pause just for a moment and, and give honor where honor is due um, because we are, are blessed and privileged to have uh, the oboe mostly. He doesn't play the recorder that much in church, but we are blessed and privileged to have that instrument backing uh, the musicians at Open Door every Sunday. And it is a blessing, and I want to give honor where honor is due. And uh, we are blessed and privileged 
uh, to have that uh, Sunday after Sunday. And I also um, want to also acknowledge his beloved bride, Sister Cinder. Now she gonna, she gonna tell me off for putting her on the spot, but it's so good to have, they, they, they hang together and they have been an example to many of us, uh, younger ones coming along in the faith. And um, they have been with us uh, since the first year that we started, some 30 something years ago. And uh, we are blessed, Elder and Sister Sindanel, to have you um, uh, being a part of us. I, I'm so thankful. Uh, I don't know how all of this came about. I'm so thankful that uh, I pastor the oldest Methodist church in Bermuda. And also I pastor one of the youngest churches in Bermuda. How that happened, I'll never know. <laughs> but it is a fact. And uh, I, I just feel so honored and privileged to be able to be here uh, most Sundays and to be in St. David's. People are asking me, how do you do it? And uh, you know, it gets done. That's all I can say. And um, I remember uh, standing at open door maybe a couple of years ago and saying, and it is true, uh, I don't know what I'm doing, but God does, but God does. And to him belongs the glory, the honor, and the praise. Last week we started um, what is now becoming a mini series and it's last week and this week and if you remember, if you were here last week and if you were watching last week, um, one of the statements that was made was, if people only knew. That stuck with me as God prepared my heart to minister to that. Uh, if people only knew, and there are four things that stood out concerning that and was, number one, if people only knew how much God really loves them if they only knew. Number two, if people only knew how good God's intentions are toward us. The Bible says that God, um, he knows the thoughts. God says, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you, good intentions thoughts to prosper you and not to harm you, thoughts to give you a hope and a future. That's our God. And in the midst of all the, and for lack of a better word or phrase, in the midst of all the terrible things that are going on worldwide, God's thoughts towards us is to prosper us. And to give up. We got to work through the stuff sometimes. Can I get a witness? We got to work through some stuff. We got to get over some stuff, get around some stuff. But at the end of it all, we come back to God and his word. And that word says, I know the thoughts I have for you. Can I say to you, I'm, I'm going way off script now. I probably won't even get back on script. But may I say to you right now that God's always thinking about you always thinking about us, how he can bless. And it is really just up to us to endeavor to line up with his word. Number one, how much God loves us. Number two, how good his intentions are. Number three, how gracious is his favor. The Bible says in Psalm 30 verse 5 that his anger is for a moment, but his favor is for life. Praise be to his name. And number four, how grand is his ultimate plan? The Bible says, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. The grand plan is that he gives us eternal life and we shall never perish. And so we have these four uh, principles that we can stand on. And all of these things are rooted in verse 78. If you would turn there to the book of Luke chapter 1. And verse 78, all this comes about because of and through the heart of tender mercy. God has a heart of tender mercy and 
in addition to a heart of tender mercy, there is loving kindness. Can I get a witness out here this morning? I promise not to keep you too long, but if, if you don't respond to me, I will be here a long time this morning. I need a response from you. Amen. 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 Don't leave me hanging up here this morning. Amen. But here, here's the deal. The deal is in verse 77 that through the prophets and through um, John the Baptist and when Zacharias gave his prophecy, he spoke concerning John the Baptist. And in verse 77, John the Baptist was sent and uh, ahead of Christ. And this is what he was to bring to bring and give the knowledge of salvation. John the Baptist didn't bring salvation. He brought the knowledge. He was the forerunner of Jesus the Christ, of salvation to his people in the forgiveness and remission of their sins. And it comes about because God has a heart of tender mercy toward his creation. Amen. And loving kindness of our God, a light has from on high will dawn upon us and visit us. Can I tell you this morning that no matter, because the Bible deals with sin, mankind doesn't want to deal with sin. We don't want to acknowledge it. We don't want to confess it. We don't want to admit it, but it exists. And the reason why the world is in the mess that it's in is because we have strayed far away from God and far away from his word. But I want to assure you this morning, there's a little, little song, Pentecostal song, a little chorus. And part of that chorus is that though I forget him and wander away, still he does love me. Wherever I stray. First lady is going to help me. If you don't help me, first lady, well, she has to. She's, she, she's on the order. She has to help me out. Though I forget him and wander away, still he does love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. It's important to know that no matter how deep the sin and how categorized the sin is, it is because of the tender mercy and loving kindness of God that he wants to show us back to the Father. Listen to this carefully. No matter how deep the sin, no matter how desperate things get in the sinner's life, no matter how dark the situation is, we can never turn God off from loving us. That's worth a shout by itself. No matter, it doesn't matter what we've done, where we've been, how long we've been there, how long we've been out of favor with God because we turned our back on him. It doesn't matter. There's nothing that we can do to turn God off from loving us. There's nothing that we can do to turn him around. There's nothing that we can do to turn him back. No matter how deep you think you are in, the Bible says his arm is outstretched still. No matter how desperate we get, there is the Bible says that if we get desperate, all we have to do, the Bible says that I can call upon him and he will answer me and he will show me great and mighty things that I did not know. If I ever get desperate, all I have to do is call no matter how dark the situation or the environment we might find ourselves in, the Bible says that there is a light. And the Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world. And he that follows me, Jesus said, shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. It's important to know, talking about this tender mercy of God, that in the book of Ephesians, if you would turn there, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4 and 5, you will see posted there where the apostle Paul picks it up talking about the tender mercy of God. And look at what Paul says. He says, but God, so rich is he, here's that word again, in mercy. 
so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. I say to you, my friends, this morning that God's love toward us is intense. God's love toward us, it's so intense that we are here on Christmas morning. Why? Because he sent his son into the world. Praise God. And Jesus went from the cradle to the cross on our behalf. Amen. I, I see Sister Grace here stumping her feet down here. But you know, it, it is so, and when we get excited about it, I pray that the church of God get excited and stay excited about the word of God, about the hope that we have in the word of the living God. He says, but God so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. My Bible tells me that God so loved the world so dearly loved and highly prized the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise be to his name. And we look at this and verse 5 says, and even when we were dead in our shortcomings and trespasses, that word death really means separated from God. He said he made us alive. He quickened us. In fellowship and in union with Christ, he gave us the very life of Christ himself. I wish I had time this morning. It says the same new life with which he quickened him, for it is by grace his favor and mercy with you are did, you did not deserve that we are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Sometimes when I read stuff like this and meditate on it, the only thing I can say is, wow, this means personally for me. This is mine. This is a promise for me. Saints, listen, when you read the scripture, take it personally. And it will change you radically when you know that God loves you infinitely that you know that God will do the exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or imagine and that God sent his son please hear this that if you and I were the only ones in the earth God would have still sent his son just to die just for one of us but there are billions of us. And the Bible says, or the songwriter says, though millions have come, there's still room for one. If you haven't come this morning, there's room at the cross for you. At a point in Israel's history, because Luke is writing the account, and he's looking back, and we look back at a point in Israel history and their journey. And the prophet Jeremiah writes in his lamentation now, just for a little background, God was in covenant agreement, in covenant connection with his people, and his people left him after him blessing them, after him protecting them, after him providing for them, after God doing miracles for them. Parting the Red Sea where they could walk over on dry land. Amen. Giving water out of a rock from the desert. Giving manna from on high. God did some marvelous things. And they wanted to be like everybody else. How are we going to want to be like everybody else when we have a God like no one else? Hallelujah. I don't, I don't know how we do it. But he's reflecting. And, and the prophet Jeremiah wrote in his lamentations in the chapter of three in Lamentations and in verse 51, he looked back and I, I read this out of the New International or the New King James Version. And Jeremiah looked back and looked at the state of the nation of Israel and knew where they had come from. Because the Bible says, God told the nation of Israel, I'm going to make you the head and not the tail. 
I'm going to make you above and not beneath. I'm going to bless you so much that your enemies will come and ask about me. I'm going to bless you so much that you're going to be lenders and not borrowers. God, whoa, Jesus, what a God is this? Amen. And he looked back and saw the state of the nation. And this is what he says. My eyes bring suffering to my soul. He said the things that I see should not be because God had been faithful to his people. And he looked back and he saw, he said, I'm crying and I'm weeping because the things that should be are not and the things that shouldn't be are. And he says, my eyes, I'm looking at the state of my people and my eyes bring suffering to my soul. Turn in the book of Jeremiah and go back to verse uh, 48, if you wouldn't mind, please. And uh, when you look at what he says in beginning in verse 48, Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Lamentations. Lamentations, chapter 3, and beginning at verse 48. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. Sorry. He says, My eyes overflow with streams of tears because of the destruction of the daughter of my people. When there ought to have been tears of joy, when there, ought to have, when there should have been celebration, when there should have been, for lack of a better word, can I use this word in the pulpit? Partying. When there should have been just celebration because God was good. I say to you this morning, let me just sidetrack. I think our God loves a good party. You better stop it this morning. I think our God does a good celebration. If you look back over the nation of Israel and when God set up all these feasts and the people would dance and shout and clap and sing at the things that their God did for them, don't tell me that the church can clap and sing and rejoice at the things that God, don't tell me that God don't want us to live in prosperity and peace and power. Our God is an awesome God and he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God, but Jeremiah didn't see that. He says, I'm crying with streams of tears because of the destruction. Verse 49, he says, my eyes overflow continually and will not cease. The man couldn't stop crying. The prophet couldn't stop weeping over the conditions that should not have been. He says, and I'm crying until the Lord looks down and sees from heaven. My eyes cause me grief at the fate of all the maidens and the daughters of the towns. Jeremiah, God gave me this little sweet nugget. If you take notes, write this down. And God said to me, we see Jeremiah saw what was happening. And what he saw was happening was ruins. But God sees what could happen, and that's redemption. I, when God said that to me, out of, the only thing I could say was, wow. We see destruction and ruin and could, could, can this be fixed? Can this be made right? Can we get this together? And can this be straightened out? And we see, and unless we see with the eye of faith, we will see destruction and gloom and doom and ruin. But God spoke to my heart and says, this is what we see. And he says, but I see what could happen. And that's redemption. And that's why God sent his son to redeem mankind and bring us back into favor with him. Praise be to God. We look at this and we see how God's heart was torn and tormented by the actions and even the inactions of his people, torn and tormented. But he spoke to my heart again and said, even though my heart was torn and tormented, it didn't change my mind. It didn't change my posture. He says, my hand is outstretched still. 
He says, I'm looking down and if anybody would reach out to me, I would grab their hand and lift them up. You know what the psalmist says? He says, he brought me out out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. He brought me out of a terrible situation. Listen, I say to you, and some of you know exactly what I'm saying, that there have been situations and trials and tribulations, and didn't, you didn't know how it was going to turn out, but you decided that I'm going to trust God through it. Hallelujah. That I'm going to trust God through the process. That I'm going to stay with God. And what you do, you just reach out your hand. But remember, as we reach out our hand, God's hand has already been extended. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And we know that through all that Israel went through up until the time of the prophecy of John the Baptist coming before Jesus Christ. It didn't change or alter his plan. The Bible says when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a virgin, born of a woman, born under the law. Why? For those that were born under the law might be redeemed. We might be redeemed. Redeemed means to be reclaimed, and to be redeemed means I've been reclaimed, but there was a price paid for my redemption. I say to you, beloved, this morning, I'm almost done. Hold on. Hold on. I'm almost done. This view, this insight, when we see how God, amen, has extended himself to us because of and through a heart of tender mercy and loving kindness. When this gets a hold of you and you get a hold of it, it will plunge us into a deeper reverential awe of who God really is. Last night at the, at the service at Open Door, I was talking about living in awe of God. And I said to the congregation last night, I look at a cow poly. You all know what a cow poly is? Cow poly is one of the smallest fish in the water, but it's most beautiful. And you see, and I, I look at that, and I just stand in awe. Why? Because God created it. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west, and it's been like that since God made it. And it never changes. The, the tides rise and fall. The vegetables come and go in their season. And none of that has ever changed. I live in awe of him. He's my creator. Not only is he my creator, but he's my redeemer. He's my sustainer. He's my joy. Can I preach this morning? He's my peace. He's my wisdom. He's my righteousness. I say to you, if he could do all of that, what could he do for me? Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing to know that you can be connected or if you have been disconnected, you can be reconnected to your creator. Hallelujah. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and what? And give him the glory. Give him the glory. Great things he has done. This ought to plunge us into reverential awe of his divine majesty and should dictate my response to him and my response to others. We can never be the same when you see God for who he is. We can never see the same when we see God for who he is. We can never act the same when we see God for who he is. Verse 78 says, in the last part, says, a light from on high will dawn upon us and visit us to shine upon and give light to those, as Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 9, give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to direct and guide our feet in a straight line. And the end of that straight line and on the road of that straight line, 
I see this word P-E-A-C-E. Give me some. I remember when my mom raising six boys. I was the youngest of six boys. I, I'm telling you, these were some hard boys. I have, listen, I didn't always have a mic in a pulpit. I'm going to tell you that right now. It wasn't always like this. But we, she raised six boys. And I can remember Mother Louise Smith saying, Lord, give me grace with these boys. <laughs> And she would say, all I want is a little bit of peace. <laughs> well, she got it because the majority of us ended up, actually all of us ended up acknowledging, confessing, and following Jesus Christ. Some of us went on to pastor. Three of us went on to pastor, amen. And uh, one of us was a musician and an ordained minister. One was high priest Shiloh. You might remember that name. He was, he was who he was in his own right. I leave that one alone right there. He, he was who he was. And, and Glenfield Buff, the third, he came back to know the Lord Jesus. I'm just believing that all six of the boys, praise God, hallelujah, made it in. And mom had some peace after all. Bless God. And this is what he said right here, a straight line into the way of peace. But in order to have that line, there had to be a light that shined on the way, a light from on high. Here we have in verse 77, there is a shift of focus from John the Baptist to Jesus the Christ. Because in John chapter 1, if you turn over there, you will see where John confessed in John chapter 1 and verse 4. He says, in him, meaning Jesus, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines on in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out or absorbed it or appropriated it, and is unreceptive to it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. Look at John's mission now. This man came to witness that he might testify of the light, that all men might believe. That was John's mission, to testify that there's a light coming behind me, and it's going to shine in front of me. And he says, he was not the light himself, but came that he might bear witness regarding the light. There it was, the true light was then coming into the world, the genuine, the perfect, the steadfast light that illuminates every person. You and I are included. Oh, how wonderful it is to know that this light has come to us to shine upon and give light to all who sit in darkness. And I began to ponder on that. And when we understand that, that that word sit in darkness really doesn't mean coming in and taking a seat and getting up and going somewhere else and sitting and being in darkness. That word sit in darkness means existing in darkness. That, that was darkness was their existence. There was no illumination in their spirit. There was no spiritual light turned on on the inside of them. I say to you, when you confess and acknowledge Jesus Christ and his spirit comes inside of you, a light comes on. A, I'm telling you, a light comes on and it shines from the inside out. You can't explain it. You can't define it. The only thing you do is enjoy it. And you begin to walk in the light as he is in the light. And the shadows start to fall behind you. And he begins to order your steps according to his word. Can I help myself for three more minutes this morning? We are to understand that this light will never go out. It don't matter how many walls break out, Elder. The light's still going to shine. Don't matter, don't matter how many governments come in and go. The light's still going to shine. Don't matter how disobedient the children get. The light's still going to shine. It doesn't matter how things get in the universe. It do, the light's still shining. And it's shining to illuminate the path of everybody who would just simply 
believe. Isaiah says this, arise and shine for your light has come. Jesus, the light of the world. If you're watching and if you're here this morning and that light is distant from you, otherwise than being resident in you, then you can make a change this morning and the light can no longer, doesn't have to continually shine outside of you. The light can now be switched on inside of you. Before I finish, give him a good praise, would you please? He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We look at this and we see he says this light is come to direct and guide our feet. No wonder the psalmist says in Psalm 119, he says this, your word, O Lord, your word, it's your word. That's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We don't have to grope in spiritual darkness anymore. Listen carefully. Boy, I hear him talking now. We don't have to wonder what's going on anymore. We don't have to fear anything or any circumstances anymore. We have the light of life that is resident in us and it is stirring up and I heard a sister testify a little earlier in the service that says she's bubbly and I say to you we ought to be bubbly we ought to be bubbling and running over remember that old song elder running over my cup is full and running over since the Lord saved me I'm as happy as can be my cup is full and running over, I say to you, arise and shine. For our light has come. Our light is not coming. Our light has come. There's no more light to come. Jesus said, if any man follows me, he shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Settle it this morning. Let everything else go by the wayside. Settle the issue that the light's not only going, not just going to shine around me, the light's going to shine inside of me. And he said this, if any man would ask me to come in, he says, listen, me and my father, we're going to come and we're going to set up camp. We're going to make our home in you. And every day will be like Christmas. Now, careful now so that you don't misquote the pastor. So that doesn't mean because every day is like Christmas. That doesn't mean everything's smooth every day. I just want to make this perfectly clear so that you don't go up. My pastor said, if I come to Jesus, oh, there's going to be Christmas every day. Nobody going to bother me. I ain't going to have no worry. I ain't going to have no stress, no strain, and not, nothing's going to go wrong. That's not what the Bible says. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have some trouble. He said, but behold, I have overcome the world. And because he has overcome, we too are overcomers through him that loved us. Is the light on? Is the light on? Is the light on in you? The, 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 the switch is by your hand. Let me change that. The switch is by your heart. If you would turn that switch on today and say to him, Lord, I want you to be the light of my life. He will come in and he will make his home in you. And I say to you, your home will be different because your heart is different. Is anybody listening to what the Spirit's saying to the church this morning? If you're here this morning and you don't know him, I say to you, this word is as true as you are sitting on that bench. 
And this word will not change as sure as you are sitting on that bench. And everything that this word has declared has either come to pass, is coming to pass, or will come to pass as sure as you are sitting on that bench. And if you need a hand from God, a help from God, if you need the salvation of God to verify everything in this book, all you have to do is one thing, one thing, ask. You can't pay for it because it's too expensive. He already gave his life. You can't borrow it from anybody else because it's personal with them. And there's enough to go around. I feel like shouting. I say to you, there's enough to go around. If you're here this morning and you'd like on Jesus' birthday, this ain't your birthday. It ain't your cousin, your neighbor's birthday. This Jesus, we celebrating Jesus' birthday. And the best, he's given the best that he could give. And all he asks is that we give him ourselves. And he said this, I will give you beauty for ashes. I will give you the oil of joy for mourning, and I will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Who wouldn't want some of that? <laughs> Who wouldn't want, and especially that it's free? We go and we, we pay for stuff that don't really matter after all a hill of beans. And it's so, you know, I, you know, see this shirt right here? I love this shirt. I wear it once a year at Christmas. I'm headed for about 40 years. I wear it once a year. I pay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Jesus paid a dear price. And today is his birthday. If you really want to celebrate life, give him your life and watch the difference and the change that he will make as you begin to follow and grow with your heads bowed. Elder, would you go to the keyboard and just exercise that other gift that you have? If you would like to become a part of the family of God by putting your faith in him on the day in which we celebrate his birthday. Come and meet me here. Let me say to you, you're not coming to Cubs Hill Methodist Church. The church can't save you. You're not coming to Pastor Dean Smith. He can't save you. You're coming to Jesus Christ, the only one who can save you. If you're here this morning, and you've heard this word before, and you said the last time you were here, I'm going to do it next time. Well, next time has come. Would you come to him? Come today and settle the issue of eternal life. Would you come today? Praise God. Mm. I am without one plea, but that my love would die for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee. Of God I come, I come. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your church. Thank you for your birthday that we can celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I pray that this word go in deep, bear fruit, O oh God. Take root and bear fruit. I pray that the joy of the Lord because of the knowledge of God 
would well up in our hearts that we would never be the same and that we would be able to say if people only knew how good God is, how gracious God is, how grand is his ultimate plan. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you know I always say this, but let's do it again. Let's give God a good praise, would you please? Let's give him a good praise. Ushers, would you come and let's take up this morning's tithe and offering? Praise God. Yeah. Worship his majesty unto Jesus be your glory honor and praise majesty kingdom authority flows from his throne unto his own his anthem reigns so exalt so exalt lift up on high the name of Jesus magnify come glorify Christ Jesus the King majesty worship his majesty Jesus who died now glorified King of all kings so exalt so exalt lift up on high the name of Jesus magnify come glorify Christ Jesus the King Worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Jesus who died, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Jesus who died, now glorify King of all kings. Brother Andre, would you ask God's blessing upon the offering? Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, dear Lord, for coming and visiting us with us this morning, dear Lord. And Lord, as you have so richly blessed us, dear Lord, we return just a portion of what you've given to us, dear Lord, to use for you for the sake and of your kingdom, dear Lord. Lord, bless everyone who gave and a double blessing to those who could not afford to give, for you know their hearts, dear Lord, for all these things we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Just by way of announcement, um, as you know, we are having a combined service uh, at Open Door next Saturday evening, it will be the Old Year's Night or New Year's Eve, however you want to describe it. And it's going to be at 6.30 until about 8. And it will be a time of singing. We have musicians and our praise team. And it's going to be a time of testimony and singing and rejoicing. And uh, we have planned to have a minibus for those that don't like to drive at night. Um, a minibus coming from the West End, namely from Cubs Hill Methodist Church. Do you do know that we are one church in two locations? That's all it is. We are one church in two locations. And we're looking to celebrate next week, Saturday evening, with both churches in one house under one roof. 
Now, I see the note that says uh, to respond to Sister Edna by the 22nd, that time has passed, all because they want to know the size of the bus. Uh, but anyway, uh, I hope that some people have responded and uh, because we want to have a time of celebration and rejoicing. Listen to me carefully. The reason why you're getting ready to face 2023 is because God brought you through 2022. Amen. 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 And we need to be able to testify about it. Tell somebody. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. And may I also say the reason why we got through 2022 is because he brought me through 2021. So God's been good. I mean, God's been good. We are just coming out of basically uh, two years of almost shutdown. Amen. And we want to listen. You can wear shoes or no shoes. We got some, we got room down there. You can run right around the circumference of the church. And let's have a time. Let's have a party. And tell God how much we love him and thank him for all the things that he has done. So uh, I'll just leave this with the powers that be. And um, hopefully that we can fill up a bus or two or three. And uh, amen. We'll come down to open door. And some of you have never been to our facility. Uh, God has blessed us, really, in the East End, and uh, there's plenty room, I can assure you. Amen. We have some visitors, and I just want to follow the protocol. Amen. We have some visitors. We have some family. Amen. First Lady, come on and, and take the, just take the mic over. Because okay, to anybody that, who's here for the first time? We got some first time visitors. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Andre? Because I, I want my lunch this afternoon, so I'll just leave her. Amen. Amen. Just put your hand out. Stacy, Marcia Ashby, I'm from Tampa, Florida, First Church of God. Amen. Stacy is our niece. Paula Handy, I've been attending Open Doors Assembly, but my first time here. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Kadeem Brown. I'm from Jamaica. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand together. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We have the victory in the name of Jesus. 